Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our one o'clock devotional. Today, we're gonna to be learning about St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows. I'm excited to talk about St. Gabriel because he's a passionist saint. And as many of you know, I'm hoping to enter formation with a passionist. So he's become a good saint friend of mine. So St. Gabriel was born Francis Posenti. He was actually born in Assisi, the same as place as St. Francis, and he was even baptized in the same church as St. Francis of Assisi. Francis was born on March 1st, 1838, and he shared many attributes with St. Francis of Assisi. He was from a large family. He was the 11th of 13 children, and his mother died when he was four years old. And like St. Francis of Assisi, Francis Posenti, who would become Gabriel, was popular and good looking and very social and just loved like partying and being with people. He was very popular. I mean, he was also um, just well liked in general and well spoken. He was intelligent. He was very graceful. He was tall. Um, he greatly enjoyed singing and he, like I said, he was very intelligent. So he achieved reward, awards in school and Latin. He loved theater acting. Um, he also loved dancing. He even was nicknamed the dancer and his friends called him Il Domarino, which means the ladies man because he's very popular with women. Um, So when he was younger, he became ill um, and he promised Our Lady that if she would heal him, he would enter religious life. And he got better, but he didn't follow through on his promise. And then he got sick again and he made the same promise, but again, he didn't follow through. He looked into joining the Jesuits. Um, but he, and he was even accepted, but he kept putting off joining them. So then he became sick a third time. And this time he was attending the procession of a holy picture of Mary, help of Christians. And as he was looking at the picture, he felt Mary speak to him. She said something like, you are not called to follow the ways of the world. What are you doing then in it? Enter the religious life. She kind of kept telling him to stop stop stalling and just do it already. Um, so I read this story, one of my visits with the passionist and it really struck me. And I felt like Mary telling me the same thing, like stop, stop delaying, stop putting it off, just make the decision now. And then I, that's the time that I asked to um, formally apply to join the passionist. Um, so St. Gabriel has a special place in my heart. So St. Gabriel, joined the Passionists after that. He had a great devotion to our crucified Lord and to Our Lady of Sorrows. So he felt like the Passionists um, would be the best way for him to live out his calling. Um, and here's a picture of him entering um, as, or making his vows. Um, and he entered the Passionist on September 10th, 1856. He was only 18 years old. Um, he was very fervent um, and excited. He said, the happiness and joy that I enjoy within these walls is unimaginable. His greatest loves were Jesus crucified, the Eucharist, and the Virgin Mary. Now, when he was in religious life, St. Gabriel didn't really do anything extraordinary. He was very faithful to the way of life and strove for holiness and following his everyday duties. The priest, Father Norbert, who was in charge of him and um, was his spiritual director, said, Such was his hunger and thirst for all virtues, such the assiduity with which he labored for their acquisition, that he never lost an opportunity of practicing them. The motto of the Passionist is, may the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ be ever in our hearts. And St. Gabriel truly lived this in dying to himself. He didn't 
do anything too extraordinary with his life. He didn't have mystical visions or heal people or anything like that. His heroism lied in dying to himself and conquering his sinful inclinations. As I said, before he entered, he was very popular and good looking. So he strove to overcome his vanity and his pride and his desire for the attention of others. He really followed the command of Jesus to sell everything, take up his cross and follow him. So St. Gabriel was only a passionist for four years. So he was still kind of in the training period and he began to get sick again. Um, and it was only in a couple of years that he died at the young age of 24. So he was with the Passionists for six years and he didn't even live long enough to be ordained a priest. So again, it looks kind of looks like his life was a waste. He didn't do anything that special. He died on February 27th, 1862. This is a picture of um, him on his deathbed. Um, and it's believed that the, he saw the Virgin Mary before he died, receiving last rites. And his tomb. But after he died, many miracles happened through his intercession. So he did amazing things after he died. Um, in the late 1800s, Father Germano, a passionist priest, recommended many sick people to pray to him. One of those was St. Gemma Galgani, which we've done another talk on. She was another passionist saint. St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows appeared to St. Gemma and told her that she would be healed if she prayed a sacred heart novena. So he appeared to her for nine days and they prayed this together and she was healed. So again, St. Gabriel seems to do nothing that remarkable with his life, but he was faithful to his duties as a religious and strove to do the will of God in all things. He was said to have said often, our perfection does not consist of doing extraordinary things, but of doing the ordinary well. So let's pray through the intercession of St. Gabriel that we would be faithful to our everyday duties and conquer ourselves and to just strive in holiness in the small and hidden things. St. Gabriel, pray for us. Thank you for joining us. Please join us on Wednesday at one o'clock to pray the litany of humility. God bless you.